Every Load Runner program has an entry point in the vUser init file, which is automatically executed once at the beginning. There's also a single exit point in the vUser end file, also automatically executed only one time. Between these two is the action file, which Load Runner iterates over and over until some condition ends this loop. There will, of course, be additional script files added, such as functions to book flights to emulate user activities in the web tour sample application that comes with Load Runner. Our hope is that you'll save time and debugging frustration by making use of the commonly needed functions we've provided in our sample script. Our library contains additional functions everyone can use to display run conditions, establish variables that specify where to obtain data for the run, and other exciting capabilities. To make editing easier, functions are grouped into separate files. The configuration file holds functions to manage printing and to start and end transaction tracking. The access file contains functions such as sign up, sign in, and sign out, etc. Over the course of load testing an app being built, we often need to run just one of these functions at a time, as well as all in combination. So in the advanced version of this course, we cover what we call the runtype attribute to control the scope of processing at runtime. But for now, we'll focus here on options for efficiently coding the rotation through different landing pages. We make use of the run data in attribute to select among different sources of data. The default is a single hard-coded URL to request. The objective of the sample scripts here is to make it easier to add processing features that are otherwise time-consuming to add to every request, such as random execution. The sample script also provides a structured approach to make requests after preparation of all data needed. Making calls using our generic functions makes your script much, much smaller, which allows more UV users on every single load generator. Using our start and end transaction functions provide you a less error-prone way to add flexibility to scripts. If you'd like to capture response time in a script, it's already available. So is adding a retry logic loop. Our sample script folder also provides a way to loop through a file of URLs in the sample data file provided. In the advanced version of this course, we also cover how to drive requests stored in VTS or virtual table service running on a separate machine. This not only keeps memory use low in load generators, but provides dynamic update of data going into the run.